After sleeping like a log all night, Vandiyadeva woke up in the morning after the sun had risen. Even after waking up, he was lying down without wanting to get up. As the upper wind blew, the branches and leaves of the trees were rubbing against each other making a so sound. To that tune, the sweet voice of a young child sang Sundar Murthy Swami's Devar song with Pan. Hearing this, Vandiyadeva opened his eyes. In front of him, in the garden, the Kana trees hung profusely with golden flowers. Santhana Muthan was picking the flowers of the mulberry while holding the gut in one hand and the alak in the other, singing with his mouth. Sendhana Muthan, who woke up early in the morning and bathed in Thiruniru, appeared like Markandan, a devotee of Shiva. Vandiyathevan woke up thinking that his mother had not given him to hear the child's voice singing so sweetly and beautifully. Like Amadhana, why not spend time happily by growing a flower garden and performing Shiva's handiwork? Why wander from town to town with a sword and a sword in hand? Why be ready to kill others and be killed by others at any time? Such thoughts arose in his mind. But after a while he changed his mind. Will everyone in the world become devotees of Shiva like Santhan Amuthan? There will be thieves, robbers, crooks, and those who delight in persecuting the poor. We need a government to suppress all these and establish justice and dharma. We need kings and ministers to run the government. They need vigilante forces to protect them from danger. Like himself, kings also need people to carry straw. Yes. Today we have to look at Sundara Chola Emperor. It was only to see the emperor before the great reaper came back. If he comes it will become impossible. After bathing in the lotus pond next to the garden, Valavarayan adorned himself well by wearing clothes and ornaments. Can we go casually when we go to see the emperor? We can't say whether he dressed up for this purpose, or whether he had the thought that he was going to see Pavo or Ila Irani again that day. After breakfast, Sendan Amuthan left with Pukutala for the evening puja, Vandiyadevan left for Emperor Charkavarthi's darshan and they both went on foot. Valavarayan had already decided not to take the horse inside the fort. It is important to give the horse time to rest well. Soon the camel may be required to be used for fast travel, who saw it? Anyway, it's good to have it here. He talked to Amudan until he reached the gate of the fort and got to know some more details. Besides your mother, don't you have any close relatives? When Valavarayan asked that, Amuthan said, Yes, there is a Tamam and a daughter who were born with my mother. She has passed away, Tamayanar is doing Pushpa Kaingariam at the Kadakare Kulagar temple. He is also doing the work of keeping the lamp lit at the lighthouse at night. He has a son and a daughter, the daughter. He stopped. What about the daughter? Nothing is an oddity in our family. Some are born mute, others have sweet voices, sing well. Isn't your father-in-law's daughter dumb? Vandiyathevan said. No, no. So tell me she can sing well, will she sing better than you? Well your question is does a quill sing better than a crow? It's like asking. If the flute plays, the king of the sea will stop the waves and listen quietly. The goats and the wild animals will forget the sound. Your uncle's daughter's name is Pankyukula. Beautiful name. Beauty in name only. She must be beautiful too, otherwise, would you be so excited? Deer and peacock should beg her for beauty. Rathi and Indrani should do penance for many births to become beautiful like her. Valavarayan saw that Sendan Amuthan's soul was not fully engaged in Shiva devotion. Then tell me who is the suitable bride for you. Is the daughter-in-law married because of the uncle's daughter? When is the wedding? Vandiyathevan asked. I will never say that she is worthy of me. I am not worthy of her in any way. If you give a blessing to Pungujali like in the old days, the kings of fifty-six countries will come and compete. They will come as if the gods came from heaven to marry Dhammayanti. But in this Kali Yuga, all that kind of thing will probably not happen. Then tell her that even if she wants to marry you, you will refuse. Very well, the Lord appeared before me and said, Are you coming to Kailash with this body like Sundaramurthy? Or are you living with a flower pipe from the earth? 
If asked, I would say I live with a flower pot, but what's the point of me saying that? Why is there no use? It's almost as if the marriage took place when you consented. Does everyone marry by listening to the women? For example, the great Pula Vetere is marrying at over 65. The marriage would have taken place without the queen's consent. Brother. That's a great place, why should we talk about it? Mainly, I'm warning you. You're going into the castle, don't say anything about the villains inside the castle. Talking will bring danger. What, brother, scares you all at once? I am telling you the truth. Only two vassals are ruling the Chola Empire. There is no other authority beyond theirs. Doesn't even the emperor have more power than them? Emperor is lying ill. People say that he does not cross the line set by the Pavurkers. They say that he does not even listen to the words of his own sons. That's fair. The influence of the scumbags must be enormous. They didn't have that much influence two years ago, did they? No, moreover, after the emperor came to Tanjore, the power of the Palyavatarayas became unlimited. There is no one to talk to them. Even Aniratha Brahmaraya was disgusted and went to the Pandya country. Why did the emperor come to Tanjavur from Pahiere? Do you know, brother? I am telling what I have heard, Veerapandian died in the war three years ago. It is said that the Chola forces had committed some atrocities in the Pandya country, is that what war is? Madurai has come under the Chola kingdom. But some people close to Veerapandian are conspiring to take revenge somehow. If there is a king in old Are, the soldiers brought him to Tanjavur because they could not protect him. The fort is too bad here and there is a lot of guard. And the doctors said that Tanjavur is better for the emperor's health than old Are. Everyone is talking about Sundara Chola's body. But no one knows what the disease is. Don't know what? The emperor had a stroke and lost both legs. Damn. Is that why he can't walk at all? You can't walk, you can't even ride an elephant or a horse, you can only go on a palanquin and carry it from place to place. It's even more painful. That's why the emperor doesn't leave the palace. They say that Siddha hasn't been so calm for some time. Ah! What a pity! Don't even call it a pity, bro. That too is blasphemy and the slanderers will punish you. Scavenger! Scavenger! Wherever and whoever you talk to, talk about the scumbags. What if they were just as talented? His treasure, the emperor should not have left the granary, Tanjore city police, an army in their possession. Was it not because they had given so much power that they started plotting against the emperor? How far will their plot succeed? We have to do our best to make sure it doesn't fail. If there is an opportunity, the emperor should be warned. By this time the gate of the fort had arrived. Synthane Muthan parted ways with his new friend and headed towards the Talakulatar temple. Vandiyadeva approached the gate of the fort with so many mental castles.